Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the roles of neutrophils and macrophages. You should then be able to describe the stages of phagocytosis. And finally, you should be able to describe the roles of opsonins and cytokines. Over the last few videos, we've been looking at non-specific defences against pathogens. Remember that in the case of non-specific defences, the response of the body is the same for every pathogen. In this video, we're looking at another part of the body's non-specific defences, which is phagocytosis. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that, as well as red blood cells, the blood also contains white blood cells. We can divide white blood cells into two categories. The first category are phagocytes, which include neutrophils and macrophages. Phagocytes form part of the non-specific defences, although I should point out that macrophages also play a role in the specific immune system. The second category are lymphocytes, which include B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Lymphocytes form the specific immune system, and we'll be looking at these in detail in later videos. So in this video we're looking at phagocytes and phagocytosis. I'm showing you here a bacterial cell. Now a key idea you need to understand is that the surface of pathogens such as bacteria are covered with chemicals which are not found in humans. In the case of bacteria, these chemicals are often part of the bacterial cell wall. Your blood contains special molecules which can recognise these foreign chemicals and stick to them and scientists call these molecules opsonins. By sticking to the pathogen, opsonins tag the pathogen as foreign, in other words not part of the human body. Opsonins include antibodies, as well as other molecules which are called complement. So the purpose of opsonins is to attach to foreign molecules and tag them as foreign. Ok, I'm showing you here a phagocyte, in this case a neutrophil and some bacteria which are tagged with opsonins. Now phagocytes such as neutrophils are attracted to molecules produced by pathogens. Receptors on the phagocyte membrane now attach to the opsonins, and the phagocyte engulfs the pathogens. The pathogens are now in a special vacuole called a phagosome. Now lysosomes move towards the phagosome and fuse with it, forming a phagolysosome. Lysosomal enzymes now break down the pathogen and destroy it. Ok, now I've shown you phagocytosis involving a neutrophil. Neutrophils can rapidly engulf and destroy pathogens at the site of an infection. Macrophages can also destroy pathogens by phagocytosis, but macrophages also have an additional function. This is called antigen presentation. I'm showing you here a macrophage which is about to destroy a bacterium. This bacterium has foreign chemicals on its surface. In this case, we're going to refer to these foreign chemicals as antigens, and I'll give you a formal definition of an antigen when we look at B and T lymphocytes in later videos. Just like before, the pathogen is engulfed into a phagosome, and lysosomes join to form a phagolysosome. And as before, the lysosomal enzymes digest the pathogen. However, at this stage, glycoproteins from the cytoplasm move to the phagolysosome and bind to the antigen molecules. These glycoproteins are called the major histocompatibility complex, or MHC. When the MHC binds to the antigens, it forms an MHC antigen complex. The MHC antigen complex now moves to the cell surface membrane, and the antigens are presented to the exterior of the cell. At this point, we say that the macrophage is functioning as an antigen presenting cell, or APC. Antigen presenting cells play a critical role in the specific immune system by presenting the antigens to lymphocytes, and we'll be looking at that in more detail in later videos. Ok, now when a phagocyte engulfs a pathogen, the phagocyte releases chemicals called cytokines. Cytokines signal to phagocytes and other immune cells to move to the site of infection. And as we saw in the last video, cytokines can also trigger inflammation and a fever. We'll be seeing cytokines again in later videos. Ok, so hopefully now you can describe the role of phagocytes and phagocytosis.